What's up guys, it's James from the Psychedelic Investor, and we got another MindMed episode for you today. I know that a few of you have been asking for a MindMed episode in the wake of their stock just being absolutely decimated over the past couple months. We haven't really been focusing too much on MindMed, more or less because there hasn't really been much news. It's been a very slow news couple of months, and we really wanted to focus just on different companies in the field, so that's why we haven't done an episode of MindMed in a while. However... Now, that is all starting to change because we got some really big news that I'm really excited to share with you guys. So, just very briefly, and we might do a full episode on this in the future, let's just quickly take a look at their stock price. So, I'm going to go ahead and put that up on the screen. As you can see on this news, the stock isn't really doing much. It's hovering around, uh, staying where it had its previous close at. Um, and I'm not necessarily expecting this news to move the stock in the short term. This is one of those type of stories that is important for the long term, but not the short term. Uh, I'm getting a little distracted here. All I wanted to say is, as you can see, over the past six months, the past, let's call it year, the stock has been really not doing great. It's down about 50% over the past year. And I just wanted to say that this isn't necessarily because of any bad news that's happened but rather a lack of news. If we can see here where we had the NASDAQ stock up listing, the stock was at like 469 American. And ever since then, it's just been slowly falling back down to earth. And that's just because people in the mainstream media haven't really been seeing anything about MindMed. Kevin O'Leary hasn't been on the news circuits talking about MindMed. And I just wanted to re-highlight that this fall isn't necessarily because of any bad news, but just rather a lack of news. And with that, let's get to the news of the day. Actually, guys, let me know down in the comments if you do want me to do a full episode talking about the MindMed stock, my opinions on it, whether or not I'm worried, whether or not I'm selling. Spoiler alert, I'm not. But anyhow, let's get to the story of the day. Sorry, this isn't scripted, so I might be a little bit all over the place, guys. Anyhow, MindMed has initiated the Phase 2A LSD trial for the treatment of adult ADHD. Now, I am extremely excited about this guys because this is one of the few programs that MindMed is working on that is kind of the impetus for why I wanted to get into this industry in the first place. The potential for LSD microdoses is just so huge if they work more on that at the end of the episode but if LSD microdoses actually work the potential not only that, not only to help people with adult ADHD but just to help your average James your average Joe is just so huge and I'm so excited for it which means or which is why I'm so excited by this news. So just as a very very brief overview before we get into the actual press release. So this is Project Flow. Uh, I'll zoom in here for a little bit so you can see a little bit better. But as you can see on the zoomed out, this is one of like seven different main projects that MindMed has. And Project Flow specifically is to work on LSD microdoses for adults with ADHD. They said they were going to start this in late 2021. I've said in the past that I wasn't sure if they were going to meet this timeline or not, but they did, so it's time to celebrate. I don't have a bottle of champagne, but if I did, I'd be opening it now. Alrighty, let's get into the... Uh, actually, that might be way too premature. I should open it at the end when the results are released rather than the beginning of the trial, but whatever. Um, so let's get into this press release. So MindMed initiates Phase 2A LSD trial for the treatment of adult ADHD. Alrighty. So this is, uh, what has happened now is patient enrollment has, has started, or it's expected to start immediately. And this is going to happen at two different locations. So their main two different research locations, the University Hospital Basel in Switzerland, which is led by Dr. Leachy there, and then also the Maastricht University in the Netherlands, where their lead investigator is Dr. Kim Kuypers. And this study is designed to evaluate the therapeutic utility of repeated low doses of LSD, also known as microdoses. So just a quick quote from the now permanent CEO, Rob Barrow. So you guys will probably remember that uh, Rob Barrow, ever since J.R. Ron stepped down as CEO, has been temporary CEO or interim CEO. And we've been saying all along that he's likely to be made the permanent CEO. Well, that is official. This happened the other day. Rob Barrow is now the official CEO of MindMed. We can stop saying interim just to make things a little bit more easy for all of us. Alrighty, so this is what Rob Barrow had to say about the commencement of this trial. The study builds on the growing evidence demonstrating LSD has the potential to improve mood and selective cognitive processes. Further, low doses of LSD have been shown to be safe, 
well tolerated, and have minimal effects on physiological parameters. So we're going to get to this growing evidence part of his quote towards the end of the episode, but for now, let's just keep reading a few quotes from the major people at MindMed. Dr. Matthias Lichy, who again is their lead investigator in Switzerland, said, Psychedelics, including LSD, have shown beneficial and lasting effects on mood when given at single doses producing psycho psychedelic effects. So that's a large dose he's talking about there. There is anecdotal evidence for possible benefits of low to very low doses of psychedelics given repeatedly. Microdoses. This is the first controlled study to validly evaluate therapeutic effects of very low doses of psychedelics in patients. By the way, before this episode started, I had to practice saying validly evaluate like four times because I kept screwing it up when I was practicing. Happy to note that I got it on my first try there. Alrighty, moving on to a quote from the president, Dr. Miri Halperin Wernley. She says this trial will help optimize the dosing schedule, compound selection, and clinical management. Alrighty, so we know that we're starting the phase 2a clinical trial testing treating adult ADHD in, uh, with LSD microdoses rather, but what does the trial actually look like? Well, it is phase 2a, so it's still relatively small, there's only going to be 52 patients, and of course it's going to be controlled, there's going to be placebo control, so only half of those patients are actually going to get the LSD microdoses, which means that we're going to have 26 patients getting an LSD microdose, and we're going to be able to compare them against a placebo. Uh, the regimen that they're going to be using is 20 micrograms of LSD every uh, four, six weeks, every three to four days, so twice a week. Uh, just as a little side note, 20 micrograms is a little bit higher than what my general understanding of an LSD microdose is. I've learned in the past that it's 10 micrograms. But MindMed is the professional company, and I'm just a guy in uh, front of a camera on YouTube. So I will go with what they want their regiment to be. Uh, but maybe just note in the back of your mind that this might be a little bit of a higher microdose, or on the scale of what constitutes a microdose, this might be a little bit of a higher microdose. So as for what they're looking for in this trial, the primary endpoints are mean change from the baseline and ADHD symptoms as assessed by the AISRS after six weeks of treatment. So basically, they're going to be giving these people a test before they start their, their microdosing, and that's the baseline. They're going to take it after, and then they're going to take it six weeks after treatment has finished. And what they're measuring is um, 18 different Questions, nine items of which are addressing symptoms of inattention, and nine of which are addressing symptoms of impulsivity and hyperactivity. Each of these 18 questions is ranked from zero to three, the higher being the more serious symptoms. So if you had a perfect score of 54, well then you would be ADHD man. Perfect ADHD, nothing in your personality other than ADHD. And if you had zero, then I guess you're the most zen, chill person on the planet who has no problem focusing whatsoever. And of course, like I said, this trial is being led by Dr. Matthias Lichy in Switzerland and Dr. Kim Kuipers in the, in, uh, the Netherlands. Excuse me. Very briefly, just to talk about why this is a little bit important. So there are actually two reasons. The first of which is actually, you know, treating people with adult ADHD because it is a real problem. It is estimated by MindMed uh, that there are 10 million adults in the United States that have ADHD. So we're just speaking the United States here. And it's projected that only 11% of them actually have or are getting treatment right now. As a side note, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't necessarily think that the 89% of people who aren't getting treatment should go get Ritalin or Adderall or whatever the hell methylite substance they're getting. Uh, there are a lot of long-term issues with using a substance like this. So I wouldn't necessarily be like, oh, it's a crisis. 90% of people aren't getting the treatment they need. We need more pills now. That's not really where I stand. But anyhow, it is important to point out. Something else that's important to point out is over t between 27, 2007, excuse me, and 2016, the diagnoses rates increased by 123%. Although, again, I wouldn't necessarily know if this is just because more people are being diagnosed or if more people actually have ADHD. I think that's still an open question. And finally, adult ADHD comprises over 46.5% of total ADHD medication in, taken in the United States, so the market that MindMed is trying to penetrate is very large. So large, in fact, that they say that it is $12.9 billion each and every single year only in the United States. 
So we're just going to briefly take a second to look at MindMed's valuation and the valuation thesis here, guys. The thesis behind MindMed is if they can enter some of these markets that currently are underserved or the treatments aren't working very well, such as ADHD, then they can m multiply their current market cap by many times. So if we take a look here, MindMed's market cap is currently $706 million American. Now, yes, that has fallen quite a bit, as we can see here, but there are still people that say that this is grossly overvaluated. This is a company that is selling nothing, zero dollars in revenue, and yet they are valuated at almost a billion dollars. How can this be? Well, it's quite simple. Let's just say, let's take for a moment, let's forget that MindMed is working on anxiety. Let's forget that MindMed is working on depression, on suicide headaches, on a million different things. They've got MDMA, they got psilocybin, they've got LSD, they got 18MC addiction. Let's just pretend for a moment the only thing they are trying to do is treat adult ADHD. Well, if it is a $12.9 billion market, and by the way, this is ADHD, not just adult ADHD. So let's just assume that uh, it expands to encompass all of ADHD. But if it is a $12.9 billion market for pills for ADHD in the United States alone, if MindMed were to capture 1%, just 1% of that market, it'd be 12 billion, 13, or sorry, $130 million, $129 million annually in revenue. If for an early company, I think that a six to seven multiple, six to seven X multiple, and that would be very justified, and that would already reach their current valuation of $700 million. So if they could get 5% of this total market, then we're already looking at a multi-billion dollar company without even looking at any other projects that they currently have under wraps or currently are working on. And let's just go back to this screen again for a moment. As you can see, they have a lot of different programs. We're just looking at one and this one alone would justify their current market valuation many times over. However, for this to work, LSD microdoses have to work. Duh, duh. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Their medication needs to be effective and more effective than current medications without the massive, massive uh, downsides of current medications like addiction, like withdrawals, like the frying your brain from taking Adderall every day, or let's just call it uh, uh, stimulants. Let's not use a specific brand name. Don't want to get sued. Don't sue me, please from taking a stimulant every day, there can be massive, massive uh, negative effects to your brain. And it looks like LSD microdoses don't have that. But anyhow, getting into the evidence, we need LSD microdoses to actually work in order for MindMed to, uh, to service some of this $12.9 billion annually. Well, we know that anecdotally, LSD microdoses have been shown to increase focus, decrease anxiety, increase creativity, and improve mood. And these are, of course, a lot of the things that people with ADHD need help with, specifically the focus, the anxiety, and the improving or regulating mood better. However, when it comes to actual studies done on LSD microdosing, the record has been uh, a lot more mixed. Yes, we have studies like this, which showed that LSD microdosing or microdosing psychedelics in general led to lower levels of anxiety and depression compared to non-microdosers. Um, and by the way, this one of the authors was Kim Kuypers, who again is one of the lead authors on this microdosing study. So, you know, maybe she knows a little bit about what she's talking about, guys. Also, Paul Stamets was in this study, so that's kind of cool little footnote to it too. But like I was saying, there have been some studies that uh, validate the thesis that microdosing psychedelics can work. But on the other hand, there have been some studies like this, which was done by the Imperial College of London, which said that, hey guys, look, the benefits of microdosing might just be the placebo effect. And I don't know. I mean, I can definitely see how it could be the placebo effect when we're talking about a sub-perceptual dose. The brain is a wonderful thing, and it can trick you into thinking that things are helping massively, even if they are not. So maybe it's a placebo effect. I really don't know. We just need to wait for the science. And having a controlled clinical trial is the best way to figure this out definitively. So that's what MindMed is doing right now. We are essentially figuring out whether or not the anecdotal evidence is real or whether it is a placebo effect. And if it is real and MindMed can be the first to market for bringing LSD microdoses to originally help people with ADHD, 
then the market is massive for them. And from a investor perspective, this is a great, fantastic opportunity. And from a humanistic perspective, this will help millions of people that currently need help and are not getting it. So I'm just very excited about this, guys. Again, this is the very beginning of the process. I said, I said earlier, let's pop open our champagne bottles. Of course, like I said, that very, very premature. We need to see the evidence from this. Then we need to see the evidence from a phase 2B trial. Then we need to see the evidence from a phase 3 trial. So we're talking years and years, but it is very exciting. One last note, it is exciting because not only for the potential to treat adult ADHD, but for the potential of just being a macro healing supplement that people can take, that I don't necessarily need to be diagnosed with anything to want to boost my mood, to want to be more creative, to want to increase my focus, to want to decrease my anxiety. So if these pills really can do this, if my LSD microdosing really can do this, and they're not addictive, and you can't get high off of them, then there's no reason that we couldn't eventually see an over-the-counter medication for LSD microdoses, which I would absolutely love. So I'm very excited for this, guys. Uh, I'm kind of just rambling now, so I think I'm going to more or less cut off the episode. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, hug your mom, pet your dog, all that good stuff. And let me know down in the comment section whether this excites you. And crucially, whether you think the potential for LSD microdosing alone, forget about all the other projects that they are doing. Forget about the LSD for anxiety. Forget about the 18 m for addiction. Forget about the mixing LSD and MDMA, a process known as candy flipping. Just LSD microdoses alone, whether or not you think that justifies MindMed's current market cap. Alrighty guys, I'm James from Psychedelic Investor. I love you all. Peace.